In this problem we're trying to solve a system of linear equations, that means trying to find a solution of x, y and z that works in each one of these equations shown here. The easiest way to do this is to put this into a matrix. So our first equation has coefficients 3, 6 and negative 3, so they'll go in the first row alongside the constant of negative 6. We can also see the colours for the other two equations and their coefficients will match row 2 and row 3. So the next step is to try and create zeros in the bottom left hand corner of the matrix. We'll start by looking at row 3. That's very easy because row 3's first entry matches the first entry in row 1. So that's just a simple subtraction to create a zero in the first entry of row 3. Row 2 is a little bit more involved but certainly not difficult. What we can do is multiply row 2 by 3 and then subtract 4 lots of the values in row 1 to create that zero in the first entry of row 2. Given the row operations shown, it would be wise to pause here, see if you can do the calculations and agree with the resulting matrix after these row operations are performed. So we can see here we've got zeros in the first entry of row 2 and row 3, and now our aim is to get a zero in the second entry of row 3. Remember this is basically eliminating a variable every time we do this by doing these row operations. Before we do this, let's just make life a bit simpler for us, and we're going to divide everything in row 2 by negative 30, and likewise we're dividing everything in row 3 by negative 4, and we can do that because if we do an operation to both sides of an equation, it still remains true. So we can see now our values in row 2 and row 3 are much easier to deal with, so much so that all we need to do to create a zero in the second entry of row 3 is just do all the values in row 3 minus the corresponding values in row 2. Once again it would be wise to pause here to see if you agree with the resulting row operation. Now we can see we have a zero in the second entry of row 3, but we also have zeros all the way across row 3. So that makes for an interesting question because what does that actually mean? In effect we've got an equation which says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0, or in simpler terms 0 equals 0. So effectively what we've done is reduced our problem down to two equations with three unknowns. We have to consider what this actually might mean. A good way to do this is to go back to two dimensions or two unknowns and consider what the solution is in that instance. Here's an equation x plus y equals 2. So it's just the one equation but with two variables. One possible solution is x equals 1 and y equals 1. Another possible solution is x equals 2 and y equals 0. Or we could even use decimals, x equals negative 1.5 and y equals 3.5. In fact there are an infinite number of solutions that exist in this case. So a simple rule with our matrix operations is that if we have zeros in the last row of the matrix, it's most likely that there's an infinite number of solutions. But what does it actually mean? We can see here that we've got three planes intersecting at a line. That represents an infinite number of solutions. Alternatively, we could also have two planes which coincide, presenting an infinite number of solutions. So zeros in the last row of our matrix indicate that there is most likely an infinite number of solutions. We do explore other options in a later video in this series.